I realize I'm about a week behind when it comes to this topic. I did mention it once or twice during live streams when it was uh, brought up, but I've been wanting to make a video about uh, this particular topic because it's obviously on the very platform that I stream, make content on, and a platform I personally enjoy watching other people's contents as well as live streams. So YouTube is my favorite social media platform of all the other platforms. I think that's pretty obvious. Some of you probably feel the same way. And this affects any content creator and streamer going forward. So I definitely want to do a video going over this YouTube official blog and then share my opinion about it and your opinion, your thoughts regarding the uh, changes going on with the dislike on YouTube. Welcome, as always, below in the comment section. Update to dislikes on YouTube. Dislike count will be private across YouTube, but the dislike button will remain. We're making the dislike counts private across YouTube, but the dislike button is not going away. This change will start gradually rolling out today as of last week. At YouTube, we strive to be a place where creators of all sizes and backgrounds can find and share their voice. To ensure that YouTube promotes respectful interactions between viewers and creators, we introduced several features and policies to improve their experience. Earlier this year, we experimented with the dislike button to see whether or not changes could help better protect our creators from harassment and reduce dislike attacks where people work up to drive the number of dislikes on a creator's videos. I myself have been a target of this particular type of attack. As part of this experiment, viewers could still see and use the dislike button, but because of the count not visible to them, we found that they were less likely to target a video's dislike button to drive up the count. In short, our experiment data showed a reduction in dislike attack and behavior. We also heard directly from smaller creators and those just getting started that they are unfairly targeted by this behavior, and our experiment confirmed that this does occur at a higher proportion on smaller channels. Based on what we learned, we're making a dislike counts private across YouTube, but the dislike button is not going away. This change started gradually rolling out last week. We want to create an inclusive and respectful environment where creators have the opportunity to succeed and feel safe to express themselves. What's changing for creators and viewers starting last week? Creators will still be able to find the exact dislike counts in YouTube Studio, along with other existing metrics, if they would like to understand how their content is performing. Viewers can still dislike videos to tune their recommendations and privately share feedback with creators. We heard during the experiment that some of you have used the public dislike count to help decide whether or not to watch a video. We know that you might not agree with this decision, but we believe that this is the right thing to do for the platform. We want to create an inclusive and respectful environment where creators have the opportunity to succeed and feel safe to express themselves. This is just one of many steps we are taking to continue to protect creators from harassment. Our work is not done and we'll continue to invest here. Article from YouTube linked below in the description section. Now I want to say this for the record as a content creator and streamer who's been making content on YouTube for over a decade now, seven years on my gaming channel. If you do not like criticism, whether it's a constructive or toxic criticism, or you can't stand getting dislikes on your videos and streams, you should not be a content creator or streamer because not everybody's going to like you or your content or your streams. You are going to get dislikes as your channel continues to grow, as you continue to make more videos and do more live streams. However, that does not negate the fact that there are those out there that for whatever rhyme or reason, choose to target content creators. The low life pawn scam behind these sort of attacks, what they like to do is they will go to popular videos, like for example, music videos that are giving a pretty impressive amount of uh, interaction and views, even if these videos are several years old, and they'll go into the comment section and they'll do several things. One, they'll create fake accounts pretending to be the content creator that they're targeting, acting like they're us and begging people to come to our channels, come to our content, come to our streams, and either A, leave likes, or B, they will tell them simply to come to our channel and leave dislikes on this particular video or stream. They don't even have to create fake accounts pretending to be us, you know, stealing our images, you know, creating a similar name. But obviously, if you click on that link, it takes you to a completely different channel with no videos, no views, nothing 
obviously not our channels, but they still do it anyways. They'll still go to these uh, channels that are getting high traffic videos and interactions in the comments section, either A, doing some sort of reverse psychology, begging people not to dislike the channels that they're targeting, knowing exactly that's what's going to happen, where people go to these channels, like my channel, a few others out there, targeting content creators with dislike bombs and dislike attacks, whatever you wish to call it. At the end of the day, it's not going to stop me and others from making content and streaming. It's annoying. It's actually pretty pathetic, those that actually go through the trouble to do this sort of thing. And it shows that they need to uh, either A, get a life, go find something more productive to do with their lives, or seek some help. Because if that's all you're doing is going after a certain number of creators for whatever rhyme or reason, and perhaps in their opinion, there is no reason. Maybe they're just doing it because some people like to watch the world burn. Whatever the case may be, if you don't like my channel or other people's channels, just don't watch. Don't leave us likes or dislikes because in the algorithm, fun fact, the dislike actually counts the same as a like. So it technically unintentionally helps us by giving us dislikes. If you don't like us, don't watch, don't dislike, don't do anything. Just go watch content streams that you do enjoy. But what's really sad about the attacks is the fact that it makes the content creators being targeted look bad. It makes us look like we're going out there trying to e-bag and sub for sub and that sort of bullshit on these very popular YouTube videos when that's not true. And that's a policy I'm completely against. I would never resort to such pathetic tactics in order to promote my content on my channel. Most of my viewers and subscribers know this to be true. However, the average viewer and subscriber on YouTube coming across these music videos, other videos are quite popular. They go into the comment section and they see somebody that's pretending to be me or false promoting me or intentionally just sending people to dislike me. They're going to go do it for whatever rhyme or reason without doing any proper research, without clicking on that channel that's claiming to be me and go see if they actually are me. Because unlike most other places, like for example, Twitch, when you create a username, you're the only one allowed to have that username. On YouTube, that's not the case. You're the only one that can have the URL, the quote unquote YouTube channel, but your name can be whatever the hell you want it to be. And it really doesn't take any effort to create a channel and go steal a PFP and then type in a name that is similar to my name or exactly the same as my name, pretending to be me on various uh, channels and comment sections. This has been a problem that bigger channels have had to face for many years now because people will pretend to be them. Like for example, I think this happened to H2O Delirious and a few other channels where they would you know, do the same thing basically. They would steal their icon, they would steal their name, but it wouldn't be their channel. And then they would start uploading their videos to their own YouTube channel in order to get fake views and fake subscribers pretending to be delirious and other content creators, which is completely illegal and violates the TOS on YouTube. Now, when it comes to uh, larger channels that are 100,000 subscribers and plus, up to what, 13 million subscribers like Delirious, they're verified channels, which means they usually have a check mark by their names, which further confirms that those are legitimate channels. And anybody that wants to go in and pretend to be Delirious, the average viewer and subscriber will look at that and be like, wait a minute, where's the check mark? Where's the beef? And that automatically tells most viewers and subscribers that this is not the real channel claiming to be somebody else entirely. Unfortunately, the YouTube partner channels like my channel, which is a little bit smaller, well, okay, a lot smaller, we don't have our own unique partner icon by our names. And that's something a lot of us have been asking YouTube for for quite some time. No, we don't have to have the check mark, but just at least give us something right beside our name. All that we've been asking for is some sort of uh, unique icon by our name that tells viewers and subscribers when they hover over it that we are partnered channels. That way, the average viewer and subscriber could tell the difference between what is a partnered YouTube channel and what is a fake YouTube channel. Now let's get to the crux as to why I think YouTube is actually doing this. Is there a possibility that what they're saying is legit, that they're actually going out of their way to protect smaller channels that are being wrongly targeted and attacked with dislike bombs? Maybe, but I don't think that's the only reason, YouTube. Let's just be honest here. There's been a number of corporate uh, AstroTurf channels out there that are owned by corporations and make billions of dollars that didn't exactly grow their channels naturally that have 
spent quite a few bucks with Google Alphabet, the parent company of YouTube. And obviously, they put out trailers for movies, TV shows, video games, and uh, they put out other content that viewers and subscribers do not like. And what happens? Those channels get disliked. They get ratioed. But the difference here is that naturally occurs because those channels, those big giant corporate channels, put out a trailer people don't like, whether it's uh, the milk edition of GTA 5 or like an article, a news story from one of the news sites that people disagree with. They go over there. They're like, you know what? I disagree with this topic. This is BS. Whatever your opinion happens to be, uh, they dislike it. And people should always have a right to dislike content and streams, especially when it comes to a content or live streams that they happen to dislike or disagree with to the point where they're willing to hit the dislike button. In my opinion, the main reason why YouTube is doing this is to protect those larger corporate controlled channels because they most likely spend a lot of money with Alphabet, Google, YouTube, way more money than a smaller content creators, despite the fact that it is content creators and streamers that grew our channels from no subscribers to a thousand subscribers or 10,000 subscribers, 100,000 million plus subscribers. We're the ones who helped make YouTube what it is today. We are the backbone of YouTube, not the corporate controlled channels that are basically just AstroTurf. They came in with a lot of money and they were able to get a ridiculous amount of viewers and subscribers quickly and immediately get that verified check mark by their account's name and they put out content that some people don't like. Now, there are definitely corporate controlled uh, channels out there that put out content that people enjoy, trailers they enjoy, videos that people enjoy. It's not all black and white, there's a gray area here, but whenever they put out something that viewers and subscribers across the social medias do not like, then of course they're gonna get way more dislikes than likes. That's just the way YouTube is. The same thing that goes for clickbaiters around GTA, especially those that keep putting out GTA 6 video after GTA 6 video, their views are starting to go down, fortunately, and they're getting more and more dislikes with each passing clickbait video they put out, which I think is a good thing. So at the end of the day, I think that there is some truth to what YouTube was talking about, protecting smaller channels that get attacked by dislike attacks and dislike bombs, whatever you want to call them. But the other reason, which they don't allude to in that blog, is the fact that they're trying to protect the corporate controlled channels that make them a lot of money. Now to combat the dislike issue, I have two alternatives. For one thing, give partner channels our unique icon to show viewers and subscribers that we are legitimate partner channels similar to the verified channels. The other thing YouTube can do is be more aggressive in going after as well as punishing and shutting down the channels that are initiating these dislike bombs and attack. I have sent feedback, I have reported these channels to YouTube, and yet I feel like YouTube doesn't do anything about it. It feels like sending them feedback and reporting these channels attack after attack after attack, not only on my channel, but on other channels as well that happen to be friends of mine that are also making content out there. It just feels like that reporting other channels to YouTube that are clearly violating YouTube's terms of service is not doing a damn thing. I realize that YouTube is a huge platform and they're probably getting tons of reports every single day and it probably takes a long time for them to get to these reports. However, I think YouTube could do a much better job in paying attention to certain channels that are getting a huge number of reports filed on them and then realize that there might be a problem with this specific channel and that that channel is doing something to merit a large frequent number of reports being filed against them. And by the way, we've had the option to remove likes and dislike numbers from our channels and streams for quite a while now. Most of the time, my like to dislike ratio is pretty good, 90% to 99%, sometimes 100%, but there's always gonna be somebody that comes across a video or stream that I'm doing 
that you know have justifiable reasons for leaving a dislike. I do not have a problem with uh, legitimate dislikes from somebody that, for whatever rhyme or reason, disagreed with me, didn't like a video I made, or don't really care for me as a person or a streamer. They think I suck. Okay, that's fine. You have a right to your opinion. You have a right to dislike me and, and move on with your day. As long as it's a legitimate dislike and not dislike bombing and dislike attacking content creators and streamers that did absolutely nothing to you, but for whatever rhyme or reason, you just hate this content creator and that content creator or any other content creators and streamers associated with one content creator and streamer in particular, or maybe you're just completely nuts and you need some serious help or to get a freaking life and get out there, touch some grass, get a job, go find some uh, positive hobbies to get yourself involved with or whatever the hell is causing you to waste your precious time on this planet by going after a number of content creators for reasons. In the end, I would like to believe that YouTube is doing this for the sole purpose of protecting smaller channels like myself and others, but I rarely take things at face value and always feel like that there's often ulterior motives when it comes to big giant corporations or social media platforms, including YouTube. And at the end of the day, what it really comes down to is money, 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 money. And like I said, the AstroTurf channels, the corporate controlled channels, they do make a lot of money, or they, at least they bring a lot of money to the platform, which does benefit the platform financially. But at the same time, I do think that those channels should follow the same rules that the rest of us have to follow. And look, you put out a content, you put out a video, you do a live stream that people don't like, then people on YouTube, viewers and subscribers and members have a right to leave a dislike on your video and stream. Doesn't matter how big or how small your channel happens to be, in my opinion. But there does need to be action taken by YouTube against accounts that are specifically going out of their way to dislike attack, dislike bomb, dislike bot, other content creators, big or small. I just don't feel like that's the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. But YouTube is gonna do what YouTube always does, whether or not we agree or disagree with their decisions. Your thoughts, your views, your opinions regarding the most recent changes to YouTube regarding the dislike button. Do you agree with YouTube? Do you disagree with YouTube? Do you think that there's something else behind YouTube's decision? Your thoughts, your views, your opinions, as always, welcome below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free and leave a like. But if you did not enjoy the video and if you disagree with me entirely, feel free and leave a dislike as well.